What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I'm out here at a park by my house in Atlanta. It's really hot out. Found a little shaded area though. I want to kind of come out here and give five beginner tips for video people looking to get into videography and, and things that I was taught when I first started getting into this that really helped me advance my career and that I think still help me now. I just want to preface this whole video by saying you don't have to do any of these. They're not the right way. There's no right way. Just because I do it one way doesn't mean that it's right. And I still have so much to learn in this industry as we all do, right? Like it's always consistent learning. But anyway, let's get into these five tips that can help beginning videographers improve their craft, I guess, and get into it. So I got my notes out here. So my first tip for any vid beginning videographer is try shooting on manual focus. Now, emphasis on try. There are times where autofocus is great. It's very trustworthy now in modern cameras. Um, like for example, right now I'm shooting on autofocus. Like obviously I want that to be in focus and I can't roll focus when it's just me. Shooting on manual focus allows you to get a little bit of extra depth in your shots. You know, maybe there's something in the foreground. For example, this shot of Dansby Swanson here hitting a walk-off would probably not be possible if autofocus was on because of the amount of stuff that's in the foreground. It would be hard for it to get that exactly. You know, like, and like I said, I know a lot of people who do shoot on shoot on autofocus that are very talented. So emphasis on try here, it's just something that has allowed me to get shots where there's stuff in the foreground. Maybe it's a little more interesting. Um, you have the control over the focus. So if you miss something, I, you don't necessarily feel as bad because it's your fault and it's not, you weren't wondering. You weren't left wondering like what if I had manual focus on. And and this second point, my second point, and this kind of goes with the first, is turn on some sort of focus peaking or focus assist. From the get-go, when I started at Georgia four or five years ago now, I was taught to shoot manual focus with peaking on. And peaking, essentially what it does is it highlights what is in focus in the shot, if that makes sense. So like if it'll have whatever's in focus has more of like a colored like tint around the outline and you can tell it just aids in focus now i know not every camera has this i know it's good in sony cameras you can change the color you can change the the amount of peaking some sort of focus assist kind of goes hand in hand here like a focus magnifier something like that you know something that helps you nail that manual focus once you get comfortable with it my next tip is shooting in high frame rates a lot of the times when i'm shooting I just shoot in 120 regardless, you know? Because when I'm in 120, I know I can go back and slow it down. If I'm in 4K 24, I can't, I don't have that option. So having the option to go back is key for me, you know? Like, especially if I'm out like hiking with my friends or I'm shooting sports. Like I'm most likely always in 120 because I always, that always gives me the option, if that makes sense. Now, right now I'm in 4K because I want the highest resolution. There's no point in me slowing this footage down. So my fourth tip, for any beginning videographer would be turn on your zebras. Now, this is a tip that I feel like a lot of people don't really use anymore, and, and it really helped me starting out. I don't necessarily use it all the time still, um, but what zebras are are basically, it'll, it looks weird at first, right? Like if you shoot the sky, your clouds are gonna have these lines through them looking like a zebra. But basically what the camera is telling you is that it's overexposed. And you want a little bit of zebras in most of your shots, right? Like if the sky is in your shot, there's gonna be some zebras. Like it's just how it works. Part of the image is gonna be overexposed unless you're at night or something, like I don't know. Once you get that eye for what's overexposed and what's not, I don't think this is something you really need. But turning it on when you're first starting out really helped me. It helped me kind of, like I said, just kind of gauge and be able to what to see what is overexposed. You should always be shooting. Whatever you see through the viewfinder should always be what your eyes see or as close to what your eyes see as possible, if that makes sense. Now, shout out Chris Gilmore, my boss at Georgia, who taught me that. My final tip is the most important thing. And this is a very, very beginner tip. And the reason I put this last, because everyone says this, right? Don't shoot on auto. And the reason you don't want to shoot on auto when you're shooting something cinematic is you don't have control over the camera, right? If you're shooting auto, you're, it's, the camera's gonna adjust or it's gonna expose it to your sky. And then the foreground or whatever the subject is is gonna be underexposed too. You need to have control over your aperture, your shutter and your ISO to really fully um, take your, your, your shots to the next level. This is something I did when I first started out. I shot on auto all the time and um, it's just essentially like shooting on an iPhone. Now there are times like with other tips in this video where auto is completely appropriate, like right now. Uh, I don't want to control my camera. I don't know what it looks like. The lighting could be changing. The sun's moving all the time. Like I said, auto is appropriate sometimes. I can't see the LCD screen right now. So 
Like how, why would I shoot manual? Um, I trust that my camera is gonna be decent enough in this scenario. But when you're out in the environment, when you're out in the world, you're shooting a sports game, everything needs to be manual, right? Things are constantly changing and you, you need to be able to adapt and control that. Now it takes practice shooting on manual, but like with anything, the more you do it, repetition over and over and over, the better you'll get. And when you take that manual dive, when you really get serious about it, that's when your footage will just end up coming out really good in the long run. So I hope these tips kind of helped you guys. Like I said, don't you don't have to do them. These are just things that really furthered my career that I'm very grateful for, for people teaching me when I first started out. Thanks for watching this tutorial. There's gonna be more tutorials this week. I'm gonna try and load it up with tutorials coming up. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Peace.